In this lesson, I want to talk about design intent and automatic sketch relations. To do this, let's start a session of SolidWorks, create a new part using one of your infinite skills templates, and let's start a sketch on the front plane. To do this, again, just click on the front plane and then click on the sketch icon. Notice that my front plane rotated to the view as soon as I opened the sketch. If yours does not do that, follow me to this setting. Go to Tools Options or use the Options drop down from the Title Bar Toolbar. Go to the Sketch page and make sure that the Auto Rotate View Normal to Sketch Plane on Sketch Creation is turned on. Now, the sketch that I want to create is basically a tombstone shape, so it's a rectangle with a semicircle on top. The fastest way would be to sketch this with a regular rectangle tool, but let's do it somewhat more manually using a line tool. Now, there is no automatic way for me to sketch a line such that it automatically gets a midpoint relation to it. And I want to create a midpoint relation to the origin at the bottom. But I can sketch this line such that it will wind up coincident to the origin. I'll click here on one side of the origin and then just move the cursor to the other side. And notice I've got two symbols showing up on the lower right hand side of the cursor. One is coincident and the other is horizontal. So I'll click for the second endpoint of the line. Now I'll create a vertical line. And next I want to create a tangent arc. Now I can do this in a couple of different ways. One is to bring the cursor right back to the point where I started and then pull it out again. And it automatically converts into a tangent arc. That's one trick. And the other trick to converting between a tangent arc and the line is to press the letter A on the keyboard. That gives you a tangent arc that you can drag across. Now, it's important that when you put the final point on the tangent arc that you get the inference lines in both directions, like this. Okay, so here I've got the inference line that's horizontal, that's the dotted blue line, and there I've got it both vertical and horizontal, so I'll click in that position. From here, I can finish my tombstone shape by just clicking again at the end point where I started. Now, this shape has most of the properties that I need. I'm going to press Escape to get out of the line command so I can test some of these properties. If I grab this side of the shape, I notice that. Everything works properly except the midpoint relation I want with the origin. If I grab the center point of the arc, I can move that as well. And the other side moves the way it should as well. You will hear the phrase design intent quite frequently when working with SolidWorks. Design intent really means how is your sketch and your feature set up to accommodate change in your model. Design intent is not something that happens by accident. You have to plan these things into the sketches and features as you build your part. So in order to lock this part to the origin, what I'm going to want to do is select the origin. And one way to do that is to use the flyout feature manager. Since the regular Feature Manager is not available right now, I could just select on the Feature Manager tab to get back there and select the origin from there. And then you want to Control Select. Remember, Control Select is just Windows for adding to the current selection. And then from the pop up toolbar, select the Make Midpoint option. Okay, and now if I drag one side of the tombstone, the other side reacts appropriately. Now we're going to talk about dimensions in a later lesson, but we're going to give you a little bit of a preview right here. Click on the dimension tool, the smart dimension tool, that's the only one we've got, and then click on 
this bottom line. But notice that this bottom line is black, while the rest of the lines are blue. That means that the position and orientation of the black line are fully defined by the sketch relationships that exist. It's locked to the origin, and it has a midpoint relation to the origin, and the line is also horizontal. Now if I add a dimension, let's give this a 2-inch value, notice that as soon as I've done that, the vertical lines are now also black, and all that remains is the top arc. So if I click on the vertical line to establish the height of the rectangle, let's make that, say, 3, now the entire sketch is fully defined. Notice also that the status bar at the bottom of the SOLIDWORKS window is showing the sketch as fully defined. I'll press Escape now to get out of the Dimension tool. When a sketch is fully defined, you can't drag it and have it move. So there's nothing here that we can drag that will move. All right, let's exit this sketch and talk a little bit more about cursor feedback and automatic relations. Click on the top plane and select the sketch icon. Again, SOLIDWORKS should rotate the sketch plane so that you're viewing it square on. When we start sketching a line, for example, and I click the first point and then pull the cursor out a little bit, you see that there is some feedback on the cursor itself. For example, I might get a distance of the line, that's that 0.139 value, it's the length. I might get an angle of the line, and I might get some other feedback like this horizontal line in a yellow box. Or I might get a vertical line in a yellow box and a coincident symbol. Whenever you have these symbols showing up in yellow boxes, that means that a sketch relation is going to be applied. If I move the cursor over here, notice that the horizontal symbol shows up, but it shows up in a white background rather than a yellow background. Yellow background means it's only inferencing a horizontal position. It's not actually creating a relationship. So yellow backgrounds, white backgrounds, length, angle, and other types of feedback are all going to show up on your sketch cursor. You need to watch it and pay attention to what it's telling you. It's kind of talking to you, giving you information about the sketch that you're creating. So if I go ahead and create this line that's horizontal with the yellow horizontal line, I click the endpoint for that. Notice that the green symbol has showed up for a horizontal relationship. If I press Escape to get out of the command and then Enter to get back into it, now notice the horizontal line is there again, but it's just an inference. Again, if I click a point here and click a point somewhere else, I can move this point or the entire line, and there's no relationship to the original line. If, however, I control click on that original point, and create manually a horizontal relationship. Now, every time I move one, they will both move. How your sketch reacts to change is really what is meant by design intent. So the combination of sketch entities, sketch relations that are manually applied and automatically applied, along with dimensions that we will talk about later, all combine to create the design intent of the sketches within your features.